book out too. Yeah, I was about to say, and they both accomplished great things off of the polo field as well. But I echo what you say there, that work to ride program incredible in Philadelphia. Yeah. And it looks like everybody's back in the saddle, ready to get going here. Patrick, no worse for the wear. Quick little water break. And time to discuss some plans. And we'll see here if there was a penalty or a foul on the play. We're going to get a penalty number one going against, uh, uh, let's see. It's a right away by Mike. Okay, so penalty number one will be in favor of the work to ride team. That's going to give us a, a tie score on the board. And then we'll have a throw in. So an automatic penalty number one, uh, automatic goal, and then a throw on the 15-yard line here giving... Yeah, there you go. Work to ride the best chance to score again here. They, they pick up that first shot, and it's going to be taken here by Damar. Trying to get something going there. Trying to get that ball dug out. He gets it back over to Juritz. Juritz comes in, goes near side here, as does Remy Mueller. And Remy's going to get caught there. It looks like. Reaching, going against Remy Mueller on this on this play. You can see the reactions from both teams there. Some fist pumps from the boys in white and little shrug of the shoulders there from Remy Mueller. He knew he was wrong right as he made this play. Heads up from Patrick. He puts it against the wall. Use that wall for protection. Legal play there as a new line starts after it touches the wall there, Toby. And outdoor polo, you may not be able to do that. You got to yeah, give only, the guy the right of way. Only time in polo you have an, a, a, a right of way on the near side is in the arena, and it's on that left wall. All right, so we'll get a penalty number three here, 25-yard undefended shot going in favor of work to ride. They had a penalty two earlier that they were unable to convert. And you do have one pass at the ball in the arena here. You could see Damar circled. He went past the ball, circled again. Now, you cannot do that twice. You're right. only allowed one redo here. So if the horse starts giving you trouble, you have to hit that ball at any angle you approach it at. Yeah, and this one's going to go wide now. It's going to be picked up here by Azaro. He'll take first possession of the ball. Mike going for it one time, off to the left. Didn't connect as well as he'd like, and it's going to be taken here by Roster to break up the play. But Mike gets turned back around on that big horse. Mike has got some handle right here. Mike sends it forward. Now he's going to hit it to the left, down the arena, where Mueller and Dame, uh, let's see, Kareem try to get to it. Kareem there. Back shot again from Yurts. And now here comes Kareem and Remy. And now again, Patrick Yurts trying to fight off Harrison. He gets the shot off. Uh, I believe he sent that one sailing out of the arena I there. Think you're right, yeah. So possession play going in favor of KC Crush. We'll get it from this angle here. Just getting away from Patrick here. It's there looking for that two-point next shot, perhaps. Yeah. Down to the final seconds here in this first chucker play. Azaro. Mike's shot. It's up. It would have been good <laughs> outdoor, but indoor. It's got to go into the goal box. So that one's going to be out. So we'll have another change of possession right here. This time going in favor of... Okay, and so, yeah. We do have the game available up on YouTube as well as uspolo.org right now if you were having any trouble with those links. It should be up out. and running. All right. Oh, Patrick Mitch hits that one a little bit. It's going to cost him because it's good. Well, Mike turns to meet the play. Harrison didn't read that one, though. Here's a little back shot, and Kareem comes in, and here comes Damar to back him up. Damar with the next shot back across the field to the right. Excuse me, to the left. Back shot again right here from Mazzaro, from Mike, and now Harrison, and picked up again by Kareem. Holds that ball, taps it forward, then sends it right down the middle. Picked off by Mike Azaro, and he is cooking back the other way. Whoa, Mike. Coming in a little hot there. And... Yeah, there was a whistle there a, for yeah. sure. Right away going against uh, Kareem. Just got caught in the wrong place. Mike was cooking. Yeah, I was going to say, didn't uh, didn't look like Kareem had much of a right of way coming to this. You see he gets turned, tries to get out of the way, but Mike was already yeah. 
barreling down there. And I think Kareem knew that he was wrong, just a little mallet up saying, my apologies. Penalty two upcoming here for KC Crush. Mike's going to tee it up. So penalty number two in the arena, if you're unfamiliar, 15-yard undefended shot on goal. And here comes Mike. Didn't Mike used to wear a white helmet forever and ever? I could swear he did back in the day. Might be wrong on that. And you're I, you're a, only a little older than me. So yeah. I remember the I remember the camo helmet. That as was well that for, was the next iteration. Yeah. yeah, good point. All right. Well, that one goes. We got a three two score on the board now. It looks like that's gonna end the chucker. Yeah, so three two is the official score here. That'll end chucker number one. We're gonna go to a quick break and we'll come back with the second chucker of the 2023 edition of the US Open Arena Polo Championship only on the USPA Polo Network. Full of travel choices, some of the most exquisite experiences are only made available to a privileged few. As a specialist in luxury travel, we're pleased to extend our knowledge of these most unique and spectacular destinations to you. Wherever your heart dreams, we'll handle every detail. Imagine Africa, the Antarctic, Alaska, Dubai, Paris, Sydney, Ephesus, Greece, Venice. Our expertise is to pair our clients to the hotel, resort, or cruise line that fits their lifestyle. We offer privileged access to some of the world's most exclusive travel opportunities. Please give us a call and visit our website. Allow us to create a most exquisite experience for you. I feel like it's a very physical, like rough and tumble sport. The grass is fun and flowing, but in here you can get, get your hands dirty and get bumped around a lot, and it's an awesome time. It's something that I'm proud to play. There's nothing that compares to the adrenaline of galloping a horse, but I love the feeling of draining goals more. I can't explain it in any other way than intense. Horses are such incredible athletes, and for you to have a partnership with one, and they trust you and you trust them enough to fly down at an arena or an open field is something so spectacular. All right, welcome back, everyone, to the USPA Pool. Now, we're getting ready to start the second chunk of our play. While we've got a minute here, though, we want to go ahead and show this really amazing goal. Uh, well, I guess we're going to have to wait because they came back quick on us here. All right, so the ball's back into play. It's going to be Damar right here. Holds that ball, gets out of there. But then uh, Remy is there. Remy with a near side back shot. Picked off again by Damar Rosser. Rosser. And... Rosser drags it forward right here as Harrison comes in to challenge. Harrison goes to that near side back shot. Leaves the ball now for his brother Harrison. Fighting. Gets back in there. Mike comes in hot, but it's another quick back shot here. Excuse me, that's Mike right there. Doesn't connect on his back shot. And now Mike can't get there. Again, picked up here by Remy. He steals it away and hits the open back shot looking for Mike. Picked off, though, by Patrick Yurich. And now... It's going to be another back shot here from Rosser. Open style off the wall. Picked up by nobody. It's Patrick Uris. He drains it. And we have now got a, let's see, a 4-3 score on the board here. And look at this continuous play action. Just keeps on rolling with it as Remy keeps his ball working down the, bo the, the, the boards here, trying to get it worked in. Mike comes in to back him up. Mike is all right there. Now Mike in the red zone. He'll send it on through. Excuse me, Harrison will get that one picked up. That's Harrison, not Mike. So we got one uh, quickly scored by Patrick, and then coming back, right back at it is Harrison for his third goal of the day. So 4-3 now, the score. A couple of quick ones there. Harrison, that's his third goal so far here, Toby. Responsible for all their goals so far. Well, Casey Crush. Now, well, let me see. We got a whistle right here. One meeting two is going to be the ruling on the field here. Going against Casey Crush. Mike pointing back that direction. Remember, we change uh, ends after every chucker, not after every goal, as you do in outdoor. Mike looks like he jumps on the line here. And the hook from Remy. Let's see. Is that what we got here going on? No, they're going to call this one no goal on the play. Uh, no foul, I think. And it's probably a good call when you look at it from the replay. I would agree as well after the replay there. 
but I like the fact that we haven't had too, too many whistles yet so far, and both teams are playing very hard. Near side back shot, Yurits is going to be the first one to jump out. He's trying to get that horse rock moving for him there. He's going to pick it up on the boards. Now, well done, Mike. Oh, it gets called right here, though. Mike, not too happy about that call, as you can see. And let's take another look at it here. Patrick Uritz, nice play. He works that ball and does Mike reach in front? He doesn't believe so. Umpires do. They'll discuss. And it looks like perhaps confirm. Is that a little, yeah, it might feel a little, a little uh, goatee there. A little. <laughs> Uh, well, one thing I tell you what I did, I was talking to some people that are there on the ground and they said, uh, Mike Azaro is as fit as he's ever been in his life right now. The guy, there's not an ounce of fat on him. He is, uh, so no foul after all that. Sorry to interrupt you. I think that's, I think it's a fair play. I think I, it's a you know what, the, the way, especially how you just said, there haven't been too many whistles. I was about to say, listen, like they're both playing a clean, safe game. There hasn't been too much danger. So you don't like to see any, and to be completely fair, you can see the, the way that the arena curves in the corner there. Patrick put a little neck shot underneath his horse. Mike was well in front. I don't think he had to make any contact. I thought fine. he was fine. Okay, here we go. Damar just picked up a point right there, sends the ball back. This is set up his brother Kareem right here. Rosser comes in, using the wall right here. He jumps back on it, gets away from Mueller coming in. It's a quick back shot there. And now Mueller jumps back on that ball, sends it forward where he's trying to find Harrison. Harrison trying to get away from Yurts. Yurts having some trouble there. He's able to get the neck shot off. And now Mike just comes in and cleans guys out, takes the ball, but it's deflected. Picked up here by Rosser, and Mike read the play. He comes in and takes it with him. Azaro oh, drops that ball back, and now here comes another play. Here's Patrick Yurich fighting off Mike. Mike gets the shot. Excuse me, Yurich got the shot off. And now it's going to be picked up again here by Damar. He's in the red zone. Damar right there. Damar, Rosser going to get another one on the board. Look at that. What a goal, Damar. Beautifully done. That's two in a row for Damar, making the score five to four. Good patient play there on the wall by Damar, not rushing anything. He knew he had the protection of the wall on his right, and that player in front, it looked like Remy there, didn't have much of a play, tried to make contact. He was across the front end, had to pull out. So we had a procedural violation here. So let's take a look. Mike backs it, hits it over to the right-hand side. And I believe Too Damar, close. yeah, I think you might have to be outside of that 15 yard that line. That makes sense, yeah. Before you can go to the Ooh, hitter. Ooh, and we get an unsportsmanlike conduct going against Damar, too. Yellow card. Wow. So that's going to result instead of a center, it's going to go to a four now. 25 yard, so a potential two point swing right here. Yeah, and one of those plays you. Have to keep your emotions in check no matter what. Obviously, we don't know what transpired sure. in the arena, but just remember back, they called no foul against Azaro on the play in the corner, which we had privilege of the replay. Right. I think it was a good call, but in the heat of the battle there, I'm sure work to ride. Boom called. Wasn't too happy that they reversed the call or a third man, you know, went to the third man. But well, either that, way, here we go. Yeah, that came after the, after the goal. Look at that. That's a two-pointer right there. He yes, sir. Patrick touch it? He did not touch it. I think he's trying to complain that he did. They got it. Yeah, yeah, two right I, here. I so like two points. That's amazing. So uh, Casey Crush goes from being down by one to up by one on that one penalty shot right there. That penalty four. Well done, Mike. All right. Then we get a whistle right here. Watch this one more time. Let's see if we can see anything here. Again, not sure if. Yuritz was arguing he that, he, that he touched it. Or maybe he was. He might have actually just been clear. If knowing Patrick, if he didn't Probably touch saying, it, he might yeah. have been saying two points. I didn't touch it. Anyways, we'll have to follow up after the game with Mr. Yuritz. But we have a penalty five from midfield once again here for KC Crush. Change of possession here. Yep. Here comes Mike. Not cleanly hit. Oh, look at that. Neymar just stabs it down and then gives it right back to Mike. Mike wants a whistle right here. He reaches back behind. Mike looking for another two. It's off to the right. Back shot here from Her uh, Remy. Harrison comes in. 
Harrison digs the ball off of the wall, tries to turn it back. Back shot from Yuritz. And now it's going to be taken right here by Kareem. Now he's going to leave that ball there for Patrick to get Patrick. Kareem's having trouble getting the horse to horses, jump out for him. Here comes Harrison with a tail shot at the goal. Nicely tried there by Harrison. And now Mike comes in. Or excuse me. Here comes Mike right now. Mike Azaro sends it through. Yes, he does. He got it. And now we've got a 7 5 score on the board. Whistle stops the clock. Mid chucker here, likely going to be a horse change, but another great goal there. That is right. From Casey Crush, relentless. Remy looked like he was going to have an easy one, missed the shot, but in comes Uncle Mike to save the day. <laughs> All right. So credit for four goals now for Azaro. He scored three, one being a two pointer from the penalty four line. So Casey Crush, a two goal lead. I think the biggest lead we've seen all day. I think you're right. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, Cody, just take a guess here. All right, I got a bit of a trivia question for you. Take a guess. Who do you think holds the record for the most wins of the Arena U.S. Open? Oh, good question there, Toby. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Maybe uh, we should see if anybody out there might know. Yeah, I mean, I can I can guess. You don't have to tell me if I'm right yeah, or wrong Yeah, take a right guess. But yeah, let us know in the comments, you know, on, on, on uh, Facebook or YouTube. Gosh, I've got two names rolling through my head i've got okay. a, a third i don't you know i should i should know the answer to the third question because i'm thinking about if my old man ever won it or how many times <laughs> i was thinking about you know the two guys that he often talked about being the best arena players in the world Big Joe Henderson and Tom Goodspeed those are the two names bouncing back and forth right now okay, well okay, let's see Tom, let's see. Jake uh, Clenter says either Tommy Biddle or Tom Goodspeed. Most wins, Tom Goodspeed. Arena Polo, Tom Goodspeed. Yeah. Ali Davis says the same thing. Yeah. So Tom Goodspeed with seven is the record. And since we've got that and people are responding there, that's great. Thank you guys so much for getting back to us there. You are correct. It is Tom Goodspeed. And uh, I like, I'm, I'm excited to say Tom is going to be a very special guest we're going to have for the finals on uh, Sunday, he's going to be our halftime guest along with another really accomplished uh, arena player that's going to be Marissa Wells. Or they're both are going to join us at halftime for the finals. Give us their take on the tournament and, and on the game, on the finals and, and everything. So very excited for that, to have them. They are confirmed. They're going to be our guests. And, uh, yep, so here we go. We're back now getting ready to get this game back underway. Should have just went with my gut. I would have sounded a lot smarter, but at least, <laughs> at least he was one of my one of my answers. That was there. yeah, yeah. Well, you got to remember it was Joe, and and then Joe Henderson was it was another contender there. I think you know. I'm sure he's got a few under his belt. Hendo, yeah. No, well, actually, Tom has seven wins. Uh, is the current record right now for Arena U.S. Opens? Seven wins for Tom Goodspeed. That came straight from Tom too. So. All right, what do we got here? We got our horse change timeout. Looks like everybody's back out. We're ready to get the game back underway. 7-5 the score right now if you're just joining us. Casey Crush in the lead. And I believe waiting our mounted official here today. We've got, we've got two umpires for this game, one in the arena and one outside. And uh, so one is horseback, one is outside. The guy that's inside is Tom Weishart. The guy that is the uh, second umpire that's outside is Ronnie Hayes. And then we also have our third man there, too. And they're kind of set up around the 25-yard lines, uh, thereabouts, between a middle and, and, and uh, the 25-yard line, if I'm not mistaken on that. I believe is what Bradley Biddle told me. So, And again, this work to ride, boom call team on all George Dill horses. You can see Damar on 328, Kareem on Iggy, and Patrick Uritz on 31 remember patrick did change horses earlier in that first chucker so his list may be jumbled around we'll do our best to provide that information and the casey crush team again they are on their own horses here in the second half of this chucker looks like harrison has jumped on to lwr that's the that's their home breed i believe this is m10 remy's on petunia and mike azaro on rm Okay, so I just got a word back. We are checking the replay on that two-point conversion to make sure that it did not come off of uh, Patrick's mallet. 
So we'll see what they decide to do here. But that is that's what the holdup is right now. I just got word. So we'll find that out here momentarily, and then we'll get the game back underway. And um, All right, so we should be uh, getting a decision here momentarily. They are checking that action right now. Great game we've seen so far, though. As we were saying before, you know, very clean game. Not a whole lot of fouls. We had a couple of, you know, I, I like the fact, you know, we had two fouls blown, but they were immediately, you know, overturned by the third man. And I think they were both appropriate calls there. If not third man, but disagreed, and then third man, you know, agreed. So, um it's unusual that you see two calls back to back get, get overturned like that, but nevertheless, I think they were both good call, both good overturns. So now we're waiting to find out if that is a two point conversion that we saw, or if it's just going to count for one. Patrick must have, must have thought he hit it. He's one of the most honest guys you'll meet all day long. I mean, if he, you know, I would, I'd trust the judgment. If he says he, he he nicked it, he must have. But it's just a question of if they can see it or not. Remember, there has to be hundred percent evidence for for an overturn, and uh, in the absence of that evidence, they have to go with the ruling on the field. In this case, that was a two-point conversion. So we're waiting to find out now. So two points are going to gonna stay. It's going to be confirmed that it's a two-point call. Patrick didn't look happy about it. Nonetheless, here we go. All right, ball's brought back into play. Juritz. Moving it forward here as Harrison stays in front of him. Juritz looking for a place to go. Harrison wanting a, a whistle. Let's see what we got going on here. We got Patrick riding one way. Mike Azar riding the other. So Patrick dribbling to the right. Harrison. You know, I think he's might have to pick one way or the other to yeah. try to make a move to clear out. And I believe that's what the umpires are. Yeah, they're going to go with right away. All right, penalty five goes in favor of work to ride boom cult. And obviously different than outdoor rules, if you were wondering or hadn't noticed there, there's not that tapping delay of game rule in yeah. the arena. All right. Rosser hits this one off to the right, looking for the wall, looking for his brother. He's going to find Korea, uh, excuse me, Damar. On the wall, Damar, he's been scoring goals all day here for his team. He leaves it now for Kareem. Kareem, now it's going to be Mike to try to get in there and fight off the man. And Mike gets the shot off, sends it out, and here goes Remy. Remy avoids the hook from Yurts, and he's gone on a breakaway, working it back down the field. Uh-oh, Remy lets that one get away from him. Yeah, Yurts comes in for the back shot. He connects nicely, pounds that one back, but Mike is able to get turned around before anyone else. And gets a pick right there from his son Harrison. Or excuse me, from uh, Remy. Now, Mike trying to fight off those roster boys. And now here comes Mike going for it. Working it down. Working both sides of the horse. Look at the shot from Azaro. He got it. What a goal, Mike. And gives this team a three-goal lead. 8-5 now the score. And that's Mike's, well, fourth point, third goal of the day. And what a goal it was, Toby. Probably the goal of the game so far. Mike, he was having... Yelling for a foul down in the opposite corner, maybe taking out that anger and aggression there on that play. He looked like a man possessed there. What a finish on the near side. Seriously, great job there. Now, Damar trying to fight off Remy. Here comes Patrick Yurts to fight and feed that ball back up to Rosser. Rosser gets it past the midfield mark. Coming in now, it's going to be Mike there for the defense. He's going to try to take it forward. And we will see a whistle. Wait to find out what the call is going to be here. And who's going to be wrong on this one? Yeah, tough to tell from our from our camera angle. Let's see if we, we get a better look here. Because it looked like Mike was going to go for the back shot. And he notices Damar coming across the back end. That might have just, that was a, a high goal, smart play right there. To force Damar into a foul there. He had, didn't do anything wrong per se. But Mike saw him cut across the back end. And watch, he decides... 
I'm not going to hit a back shot. I'm going to catch him riding into my swing here. And that's just a very smart play from Mike Azaro. Much clearer from that side angle. At first, Patrick, I thought he might have gotten in trouble for swinging into the horse. But. Patrick's getting a, an unsportsmanlike conduct here going against him now. So that's a yellow for Damar, a yellow for Patrick so far in this game. And that's going to result in a penalty five from center to go in favor of Casey Crush. That's interesting because, yeah, Patrick is usually not one to get unsportsmanlike conduct. He's uh, an intense player, but definitely not a uh, – Oh, look at this. Mike, nicely done. Yurts jumps on that ball, tries to get to it. Here's Dam uh, Kareem. Damar comes in to help out. And he'll drag it forward again. Now, Mike, no, excuse me, Harrison goes for that swing there again. Mike stays with the man, or me, Remy stays with the man. Remy looking to make a defensive play here. He comes in. He makes his back shot. Picked up by Yurts. Patrick, back shot. He doesn't connect. Harrison doesn't see the ball. Now he does. But he loses the play there. It's going to be an open back shot by Rosser, picked up by Azaro. Centers this one up, looking for Harrison. Coming in, Harrison, near side, belly shot, back style, picked up by Remy. And Patrick going to get caught here, it looks like, on a reaching call. What a play by Remy. Very smart heads up play right here. Yeah, let's take a look at the replay here. Yuritz comes in. He goes, yeah, Remy does hit that ball forward, oh, yeah. changing the line enough there. Umpire is not thinking Yuritz had enough time or space to reach back and make that play. So so Scarlett says, number three's tie down is under the breast collar. Yeah, that's true. Maybe he doesn't have a yoke on that, uh, on that tie down. There you go. Mike drills another one, sends it on through. Well done, Azaro, picking up his fifth goal, fourth, or excuse me, fifth point, fourth goal today. He gives so this one. You're uh, saying it's strategic, not groom error? Is that what we're I'm, I'm saying? Either way, <laughs> yeah. may, maybe no yoke, you know? <laughs> yeah, because you can see there's a yoke on, on Harrison's there. I don't think Mike has a yoke on his. And, you know, Remy doing us a big favor, also wearing a black helmet. They've all been on dark horses. Mike and Harrison look like twins out there. And, yeah, Harrison coming on the near side there to meet that one. This should go in favor and will go in favor of work to ride Boom Cult. They're going one meeting two here uh, against Harrison, resulting in a penalty four for work to ride, giving them a chance to stop the bleeding here. Remember, we're playing four chuckers in each semi here. So here comes Kareem to take this penalty number four. <clears throat> Off to the left, and now Mike will take possession of that ball. It bounces all the way back. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I, I don't think, uh, I think it was a really smart play by Azaro to just wait right there and kind of bait. Ross are in there, even though it bounced all the way back to the 25-yard line. I still think they have to give him possession, don't they, Cody? I believe so. I'm wondering if he also – I think he has to come across the line to yeah, get either way. to the ball as well. So take your pick. And if it was just inside of the 25, I think – Even if the ball I, bounces past I think, the 25, though? I think if it bounces past the 25, well – We'll okay, so they're saying right away right now. Yeah, because it also, you could see his horse was across the line. He had to cross the line to get back onto it to meet that ball. All right. Hi, Helen. She says, hi, Toby and Cody. Watching from Pablo Medina Mallets at the El Dorado Polo Club. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate you being there, here with us. Yeah, I don't want to miss misspeak. Take a look, because I think it's might still just no it's oh. just over the 25 but again he yeah. does make a change i don't want to misspeak because of arena tournament conditions i sure. have i have umpired an arena tournament with continuous play but if the ball happened to bounce out of the goal past the 25 it's, it would be a live ball, ball for yeah anybody. live ball that so. makes sense yep all right change of possession here goes in favor uh, of casey crush wait i'm sorry i take that back hold on 
Yeah, the other way. Yeah, in favor the other way. Of yeah, work exactly. to ride here. And I, you know, the Casey Crush has done a great job of defending throughout the day. I'd like to see, especially on these set plays here, work to ride having a couple guys a little closer, a second player closer to the ball to help out. This is partially why. I think they're trying to they're they're, they're trying to minimize or trying to you know the the the. The fact they don't really know these horses as well as they would their own. So I think that's probably the strategic part of having those guys out there trying to make some, some long flowing plays, not getting caught up. Look at this. Well nice done, Yuris. What a play. Patrick picks it up. Can he make it count right here? Patrick on the boards right there fighting off the defenders. Oh, you got it. Well done. What a goal. And Patrick's happy about that one as he should be his second of the day. Fired up. Running out of time here in the chucker. And again, that was a big goal for Urit and work to ride to get back into this game. They needed that one badly. You're right. All right. That's going to end the chucker right there. So we're going to go to our halftime break right now. The score stands 9-6 to six with Casey Crush in the lead over work to ride boom call. But I have to say, Cody, you made a very good point there. That was a, that was a clutch goal for Urit to make right there at the end of the chucker. Stop the bleeding and give some more confidence back to that work to ride team. We'll be back. In just a few minutes here, or I should say after our halftime break. So stay with us here on the USPA Polo Network. I'm Rosser. I play for Work to Ride Boom Colt, and Damar Rosser is my brother. My name is Damar Rosser. I play for Work to Ride Boom Colt, and Kareem Rosser is my brother. Uh, it's an uh, incredible feeling to be able to play in the semifinals of the U.S. Arena Open. Um, this is my second time playing uh, in the tournament. Very excited to be able to play with my brother as well as uh, Patrick Yurtz. So the same. This is my first time playing in the U.S. Arena Open, uh, and to make it to the semifinals is pretty big for myself. And you know, just super excited to be playing along with my brother. We haven't played it competitive polo since together. I would say in 2011 is when we won our first national championship. So, and it's great to play alongside with uh, Patrick Yurts. We always we're always on the other side playing against each other. So it's uh, fun to play with him, and um, we're excited to be a part of the tournament. I mean, work to ride is the only reason why we're here today. Um, it's open has opened so many doors for us um, since both of us were young boys. Um, I started when I was eight uh, in the work to ride program. Um, it was the first time I've ever uh, really touched a horse. First time I sat on a horse. Uh, first time I ever picked up a polo mallet. So without work to ride, um, neither of us would be standing here today or competing in the U.S. Uh, Arena Open. That's right. Yeah. Well Without work to ride, we wouldn't be here. Um, so we're we're both grateful of the program, and you know it's been a part of, part of our lives since we were young kids. So you know we're happy to be re representing the work to ride program, and hopefully we'll you know do well and make it to the finals and win it all. Playing uh, in the U.S. Arena <clears throat> Open uh, with the field of teams, uh, it's really nothing like the uh, interscholastic, intercollegiate uh, polo. Uh, the level of polo um, is uh, much higher than what we would experience. Um, so we're very excited about that, uh, to be able to play with this, uh, play with these caliber um, players and um, to be able to um, you know, also pull out a win is just, um, it's a, it's a, it, it was an incredible feeling and we're looking forward to, to hopefully uh, taking it all back to Philadelphia. It's really, it's really excited to be a part of the tournament. Uh, again, this is probably one of the biggest tournaments that I've played ever in my life. Uh, so it's, it's nice to be on this stage and also playing along you know, some of the top arena polo players uh, in the country and, you know, some of the best American polo players around the world. So it's it's a it's a blessing to be to be here. Um, we're looking forward to winning it all. We found out about the tournament, I think, uh, early summer or whenever it was first announced. Um, we were hoping to play with our high school teammate, Brandon Reese. But unfortunately, uh, because of our handicaps, we did not qualify for the tournament. Um, and uh, we learned that Patrick was available to, to play with. And uh, thanks to our sponsor, uh, Boom Colt uh, Productions, uh, Robert McKinley, um, who uh, uh, you know made it made it possible for us to put that team together. And when we heard uh, <laughs> that we were teaming up with Patrick, um, I think the, the feelings were certainly mutual between us and Patrick to finally be able to uh, play against uh, to play with each other rather than beating each other up on the field. Yeah. <laughs> Not much to big piggyback off of that, but it's uh um, we're super excited to be playing with Pat. He's such an amazing polo player on the field and off the field and just in general, just an overall great guy. So we're, you know, we're happy to be playing alongside of him. 
Uh, Damar and I have played hundreds of polo games, come from behind a number of times. Um, I think, you know, we are, we're just a resilient group. We always believed that we were going to win the game. Uh, we felt that way throughout the entire game, even when we were uh, trailing. Um, but I think it was just our sort of, uh, you know, tenacious efforts and ways of just going after, you know, going after the players, you know, continuing to, um, you know, work hard and, um, and not giving up. I mean, really simply, simply put, it's just not giving up. Just add in just, just staying on course with our game plan that we had going into the game. Um, you know, obviously we had to make some adjustments throughout the game and, you know, which we did in those last two minutes of the game. You know, we made sure to stay disciplined and, you know, keep playing our, our polo that we, you know, planned on playing coming into the game. Um, so it's pretty much it. Just keep working hard and, you know, try to get the win. I'm Mike Azaro, and I play for KC Crush, and this is my son. I'm Harrison Azaro. It's a, uh, a team from my ranch in Texas, from the club that we have, Lonesome Wind Ranch Polo Club. Kenneth Scioli is, is the sponsor of that team, and he sponsored us to come here, and, and uh, he's very excited, and obviously after yesterday's game, he's very excited. But that's how we put it together, and, and obviously my son was the first one that I chose to play with, and uh, Remy Mueller. Mueller is, um, you know, he's just got an unbelievable spirit and very excited to play the rest of the season with him here. So we gave him a call and he was right on board with us. We played, we played a lot together. We started playing together probably when I was, what, 16 years old. Played our first, first 12 goal together at 16. And uh, we also got to play together last year in Houston, the Houston Polo Club, and we won a couple tournaments there together. And um, we've always been practicing together, but limited on the tournaments getting to play together. So this is very special to us. Yeah, yeah. this is our first time playing. Yeah. Really first time ever playing the Open, both of us. Yeah. Never played this Open before. It's completely different hitting the arena ball compared to the outdoor ball. So you have to adjust your swing. You have to adjust the, the conditioning for the horses. Outdoor, you need the horses a lot fitter, more aired up for long runs. Arena polo, you're more sprinting and a lot more handling than, than the outdoor. So there was, you know, a lot of uh, those type of conditionings back at the ranch that we got ready before we came here. You have to make every single goal, every single play count. You can't afford to make any mistakes. If you make a mistake, you, you pay for it. You have to be ready and, and disciplined and know exactly what you're going to do. and Definitely not underestimate any teams. You have to go on the field with the mentality that these guys are very capable of beating us, but we're going to do everything that we can do to keep them from pulling that off. And we're going to turn out the champions today. The strategy of, of the game plan that we put together is what destroyed them. I have the experience in the back of the game and I've played it for the last 45 years. And these two in front of me, Remy and Harrison, were their objective was to play offense and put so much pressure offensively. Harrison has an incredible eye hand control. He's very aggressive, very quick, very intimidating. And so is Remy. Remy, maybe not the hand eye coordination that, that Harrison has, but he is so aggressive and, and puts so much pressure on, on the defensive side that it allowed me to play just a zone in the back and pick up all the, the scrap. And I just kept feeding it to them and they just kept scoring goals. Fortunately, we got a, a bunch of goals right off the bat. I think in the first two minutes, we got like six, eight goals, yeah. And so when, when you're playing two chuckers in a round robin and you get down like that, it's pretty much game over, you know. So we were, uh, we were riding high for a while. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are actually more horses in this area than humans. This is kind of like country in the middle of one of the largest cities in the world. California Polo Club is 10 minutes outside of the city. You feel like you're 10 hours away from the city. is a hands-on, exciting experience. You get in there, you get 
bumping, you get grinding, you get a little dirty, and it's a ton of fun. The lights that CPC has right, allows for a nighttime polo. We provide everything for the students, and we work very hard to keep it affordable. There's such a wealth of polo knowledge within this group of people that anybody can come and get the same experience. Put the draw reins between your thumb and your index finger. Okay, like that. She just started playing here. Yes. I started playing here last summer, but everyone's super welcoming. You can pretty much sign up for a lesson like at any skill level, whether you've ridden a horse or never before, and everyone's just pretty like open and happy to teach you. Because there's so many different people that come here, you can play all kinds of levels of polo. People who have never played polo before can get a good start and feel safe in the process of doing so. I would encourage all families, if you have any interest, bring your kids here. Get on a horse, give it a try, and it's going to open up a whole new world. LA is full of people that want to try something new, something exotic, something different. And having this here, 30 minutes away from downtown LA, is the best thing ever. It's a hidden gem. I'm 19 years old and I'm from Wellington, Florida. My family is by far my biggest supporters. My brothers, they are so supportive of me every day in everything that I do. My dad is an incredible coach. I feel so fortunate that I have him. And my mom, I mean, she is, she's everything. She's our rock of our family. She's given up her life to help me and to help our whole, our whole family, the two boys, just to, to really go for our dreams. There's so many women that have opened up holes for women's polo and made it grow such a tremendous amount. Nina and Hazel, they are the only two 10 goalers in the world and they are, I mean, they're on a different level. They are spectacular, they're so smart. If I reach 10 goals, I wanna to continue to try to get better because obviously every day I feel like you can learn something. As any polo player knows, you work so hard every, every day to try to get your horses playing to the top of their ability to work to better your string. In the finals, I played off of eight horses and I brought a lot back and I couldn't be more proud of every single one of them. You can't get a better award than Best Playing Pony. 
I'm super grateful to um, Andres, who's been helping me all season long, prepping them and getting them ready. They all gave me everything. The one that won Best Playing Pony is a super special horse for me, so it was really neat for, for her to win. Matisse Magrini sent her with me to, to sell um, a few years ago, and I had her for a little while, and she was a really, really nervous horse. She didn't like her ears to be touched. She always had to have a companion with her. She was just a little bit, a little bit of a nervous horse, as we all know can happen. And I remember I went back to Argentina and I was like, Matias, I can't sell her. I'm in love with her. She's always been a really nice horse, but she, she wasn't at the top of my string. And I bought her and every, every game she gives me everything. She gives me her whole art. Whether she's absolutely exhausted and can't give me the run, she will run as fast as she possibly can. Last year, Pamela Flanagan called me and said, would you like to join our, our team? We're gonna be playing under La Fe. It'll be me, you, and Hazel. Later on, we found out that we were gonna play with Winnie. When we made it to the finals, we were like, okay, let's enjoy this, but we won it. I remember the last horn win, I looked at the scoreboard, I was like, six chuck rows, like, that's it. Like, it's done, and I like couldn't, I honestly couldn't believe it. All right, welcome back, everyone, to the USP Polo Network. Getting ready to play the second half of our first semifinal game here. And let's check out our first half stats here, Cody. Yeah, great first half there. KC Crush, the better team through two chuckers, but worked to ride Boom Cult, keeping things close. You can see both teams doing very well, shooting at the goal. Only one miss per side. That two-pointer coming up big right now for KC Crush and worked to ride Boom Cult. Would have liked some better production from the penalty line. Just one for four in that regard. But again, very evenly matched game here. You can see the fouls committed very even. I think it's been a wide open, clean game as well. The fouls that have been called, Toby, have been pretty obvious. And there is the man right now, Mike Azaro, leading his team to a three-goal lead through one half of play, you heard his interview there with his son Harrison talking about four chucker polo and how important it is or how vital it is to get out to a big lead and really leave your opponent with no time to catch up. And here's a good look at the second highest rated player in the arena here today, Patrick Uritz holding a seven goal arena handicap and one of two Rosser brothers, there's Damar and Patrick Uritz Starting this chucker on Snowflake, again, all George Dill horses being rented to the Work to Ride Boom Cult team. All right. Well, they're getting warmed up. We've got the arena reserviced, ready to get the game back underway. And, Toby, if we think back just to the end of chucker two there, Casey Crush was up. By four, Patrick Urit scored a goal right at the end. We might be able to see it here. Yeah, this is a really clutch, clutch goal for them. Absolutely. You know, there's very important moments in a game, and I think this is one of them right here. Not only he takes a big bump. Look at Azaro fight to get in there. You love to see that. Doesn't get whistled, but doesn't win the sword it's fight against Pat. So difficult, too, on the near side, you know, with a wrist control to get that going. Yeah, he makes it look easy, but this takes an incredible amount of arm strength, especially when you have former 10 goal Mike Azaro, who is strong as an ox, hooking your mallet. Oh, man. Great goal there from Patrick. And the bigger thing was we saw his reaction after the goal. Moments before that, Patrick picked up a yellow card on mm -hmm. Sportsmanlike. So I think that was A, timely, and B, you know, clutch. They can calm down. They're pumped up, momentum on their side, feeling good. Go into the halftime break. I'm sure both those roster boys calm Patrick down a bit. He probably talked strategy. And now they have a chance to come out and cut right back into the seat again. Three goals is not a lot in the arena, Toby. That, that can be with two closed goals, in an with instant. With two pointers, right? Yeah. I mean, we saw that happen with Casey Crush. That's what was kind of the momentum shifters. They got that penalty for two pointer. They went from being down by a goal to up by a goal in one play. Here we go. Both teams line up. Balls back in. Picked up here by Remy with a back shot. Looking for Mike. Makes it too far, though, and Pat gets to it with a back shot. Uritz over to the boards. Coming in, Harrison will get to it. Azaro 
Hits a tail shot. Look at there. Oh, what a shot there from Harrison back over to Remy. Up to Mike. Mike right here in the red zone. Doesn't connect the way he wants. Patrick tries to get there. Mike sends it forward. And All right, so here we go. We're going to take another look at it here. Remy actually was the one. He was the one that came off on this. We're going to see the replay here of that play. So we've got a 10 on the board. Watch right here. Mueller. He gets the goal. Great reach. Oh, and then a little collision. Takes a couple. Over the handlebars. A couple bits in the back. And yeah. then a bailout from the pony doesn't help him out too much. That's his first goal of the game, though. Yeah, you got a little piece of that. So making that fall all worth the while there. A little bruise on the arm tomorrow, but a goal. Yes. All right, so let's see what we got here. We're going to get a uh, reaching call going against Damar, it looks like. Yeah, just get yeah, sucked in. A bit of a beach ball play. It's brother there on the near side. Needs a little communication there could have helped the situation because it looked like Kareem would have been okay there on the I, near yeah, side. Yeah, I understand why originally he thought he might be okay because Harrison was coming out on the near side. But Harrison got there and established himself for a good two strides before the play was made. Now, Harrison jumps on on the near side here, tries to get something going. Ooh. Now, I love the aggression we're seeing out of all these players here today. Look at this. Damar comes in to pick up the pass from his brother. Mike is there with the tail shot, sends it back around. Harrison comes in. He's going to be changed. He goes to the man, comes back to the offside. Look at this. Well done. Good play by Harrison Azaro. And we get a goal. Let's see. Coming in. Harrison makes the bump right here. What a play. Azaro in the zone right here. Harrison. What a goal. Harrison Azaro gives his team a five goal lead. 11 6. Now the score. Well, the opposite of what work to ride Boom Cult was hoping for coming out of the break here. It's been all KC Crush. Harrison's been tearing it up here. I tell you what, he's two goals in the arena. So I think, yeah, we'll make some adjustments on his handicap after this for sure. Here comes the, the pickup now. It's going to be a back shot there from Remy to set up Harrison again. What a read. These guys playing like they've played together for years. Nicely done. Harrison using the, the horse there to get that one turned back, but a good steal here by Damar. Damar leaves it now for Juritz, who comes in to back him up. Juritz. Trying to get away, but here comes Remy. Makes his back shot. But we get a whistle here. It looks like they're going to go reaching against Remy on this one. Yeah, it looked like the two players were still sort of making contact. If not, again, remember the wall is there. So Remy has to respect the fact that that defending player can't bail out to the right-hand side. And if he doesn't have enough room to make... Yeah, I mean, they're covered they're, they're right here. So, yeah, he has the near side, then he switches at the last second there. Yeah. So, opportunity here. Remember, just a four-chucker game. So, work to ride. Boom, Cult can't get themselves in too big of a hole. Penalty number two upcoming. And these are vital. Not easy shots by any means, but vital to make these when you have the open goal opportunity agree here comes kareem oh my goodness he tried to baby that one in and it just didn't work for him there off to the left here comes mike he's gonna pound it one time down the right hand side there again looking for look at harrison just lays the crush on Uritz. now mueller jumps on it right oh harrison hooked his own man and now it's gonna be picked right back up here by rosser takes it off to the left Looking for some space. He's going to find it here. Trying to find the seam. Drops it back. What a read by Mike. He gets back to it there. Avoids his son. Takes off to the right. Yurtz is there to put pressure on him. He's going to fire towards the goal. Top to the left. And Yurtz and Kareem are going to come up with it here. Look at Yurtz goes to the man. Unselfish polo right there. Leaves that ball for Kareem. 
He pounds that one back down, and it looks like that one might got a, might have got away from him. Yeah, and it's going to be a change of possession here to go in favor of Casey Crush. And we'll see here if Mike decides to hit for goal one time with the lead. He might want to kill some of that clock. He's going for it. One time, Azaro off to the right. Stays in the arena. Picked up now by Remy. Oh, smart play by Remy. He felt Kareem coming in there. Now, Mike comes in, muscles his way through those defenders. Azaro in the red zone. Oh, now, I tell you what, Casey Crusher is still really starting to play well here today. Uh-oh. Now, it's going to be a back shot from Harrison with a tail shot there. At the goal. No way. Back-to-back -back goals from one from the father. And that's a two-pointer, too. Wow, what a play. A two-pointer from Harrison. Oh, what a mishap there from Kareem. He'll want that one back. And Patrick having a little trouble with this knock-in as well. Again, uh, they're playing really well on rented horses. It seems just sometimes just one step too slow. Yeah. They just aren't as familiar with these ponies and getting themselves into a little bit of trouble here in the third. It's just tough when you yeah, when you're when you're not on your own horses to, to play to, to your your full ability. Your mind is working just as quick as ever, but yeah, it's just sometimes you just can't get there or can't get that horse to jump out quickly enough. Yeah, so that was killer. A three goal swing there off of wow. that last miss miss hit right here from Kareem. Heads up by Harrison to jump over, hit the back shot on his yeah, offside. Wow. Hits it perfectly as well. We got a horse change timeout right now. 14 6 the score. Yeah, I couldn't have come at a better time here for work to ride. Boom call. They need it's pretty much desperation time with a chucker and a half remaining, but down by now eight goals. They Again, can still do it. Though. You saw how many Casey Crush has just put up in a few minutes here. <laughs> it can be done, but I think a change of strategy, something needs to happen, a shift in this game. Perhaps, I mean, hey, if I'm coaching this work to ride boom call team, I'm probably suggesting whoever. Whoever has the best horse, whoever is the most comfortable, go stick on Mike Azaro, like glue, and perhaps try to you know win the game two on two the other way. Because right now, I think they're trying to spread out, get the ball down. But this Casey Crush team has been fantastic defensively. Mike Azaro's everywhere, offense and defense. Mike is just so smart, you know. I mean, he, he, I don't know how much arena polo Mike's played. He was ten goals outdoors, obviously. But he's just he, the guy is just so smart. He reads the game so well. Uh, he's got so much time to do what he wants uh, because he's in the right place at the right time. He's cut this game off. Every time they start to get something going offensively, Mike is there to shut him down and just gets on a, uh, on a bit of a breakaway. I, I don't know, you know, what you can do here other than they, the, you know, the work to ride team, they really have to make those penalty shots when they get them count. That I think they've missed a number of them so far and penalty twos on top of that. Now it's not a, it's not quite as easy as it is on the in the outdoor to hit those penalty twos and it's only fifteen yards but still that ball can get away from me quite easily but I think that's a big hole right now in the work to ride game is had they made all their penalty shots they would only be down by a goal or two here yeah you know? be, a, be a much different game absolutely and that's another thing we actually heard Mike and Harrison talking about in that halftime interview the adjust adjustment in hitting this arena ball so if you're not practice and used to hitting those penalty shots you know you think that nice little tap is just going to roll on in and that ball can have a mind of its own if you don't hit it true toby yeah and looks like ally is tuned in watching right now watching her brother play now back shot right there i should say yeah ali azaro torres now here's an inside open back shot what a shot from patrick that was awesome mike again comes in and cleans that one up right there. Now Harrison comes in. Here's Har uh, excuse me, Remy's there. And now Harrison backs him up. But we get a whistle stop in the clock here. Looks like they're going to go with a right of way against Remy. Penalty five from the spot to go in favor of work to ride. Boom, Colt. Yeah, and Mike came in. He just made that play so fast right here. The ball got away from him, but still, I mean, he's just better. I thought from our first angle, he may have crossed the line to make that play, but from the drone angle replay, just a great play again. Mike, look at that. Mike. Just goes in there and lays the crush on Kareem. That was a hockey body check right there. Yeah, really. Well, let's see what they get. You know, it looked a little clean, but he did go to the aid to, 
I get in there. Watch this one. Whack. Uh, a little behind the saddle, perhaps. Tough to see from our angle. We're right behind. But Yeah, they're going artificial age violations, yeah, is what they're calling that that's one what, there. That's what I was twice. I, I'm not a big fan of that rule myself. Nevertheless, penalty number two is going to result here for a work to ride. Boom Colt, and they've got to make this one count. They have to score this goal right now if they want to have a chance to stay in this game. Well, at the very that. least, we have a good clip for a montage with, yeah. that, with that hit right there. For sure. But, yeah, like you said, you got to make them pay. And go. a switch is another thing I was, you know, once you get your confidence off missing a couple of open goals, I think it's tough to bounce back from that mid-game. Oh, I agree. Completely. So the switch to, to go to Patrick there, I think a good call. And look at Remy. Jumps on this loose ball right here. Takes a shot. Looking for one. And a back shot right there. Here comes Patrick going for it again, looking for another shot right there. Huritz, his shot, he goes over to Harrison, lets Harrison bring him back to the ball. Harrison's going to go right to that ball to the wall. Hits his back shot. That'll set up Remy Mueller right here. Remy hits this one further down the field here where he's going to set up Mike. Mike going, breaking down the middle to get to the ball. Mike got there. Remy's there to back him up. Mueller open, back shot coming. Doesn't connect. Mike is there. Azaro looking to set up Harrison, and it's going to be picked up by Huritz. Patrick. Mike coming back at him. He got the shot off. Did it get away from him though? It looks like it did. It's gonna be over the over the uh, the wall. Yeah, not sure if it deflected or if Patrick just had to rush his shot with Mike coming in there. You can see Pat with his mallet up, perhaps suggesting there was a deflection. I think he was saying sorry about that. Oh, you could be right as well. Let's take a look, Mike. Again, he's so quick. Oh man. You could almost go one meeting two right there, but they're going to change of possession here. It's kind of like a quarterback pressure, not a sack, but you force them to throw it away. Good way to put it, yeah. We'll see if Casey Crush gets possession or not here. Obviously, the umpire is discussing. They want to make sure they get the call right. Take another look. Pat comes in. He's got Harrison on his hip, and Mike comes in to make that play. <laughs> yeah, Patrick immediately has his mallet up. Not sure for the appeal or not. So you can see the three There's, that's tires. Ronnie Hayes right there sitting down. Ronnie might be talking about this. Maybe instead of it being change of possession, well, let's see what they got here. Are they going to get just change of possession? Or something else because like i said that was almost i thought there could have been a one meeting two call there when mike put that but i didn't see it until uh, until the replay maybe that it is a that you know what i think i'm right you might be right yeah or unless there was a deflection we'll wait and see if we do get a call coming in but either way it is a hit for work to ride boom call from the center see this is one of those plays remember early in the game when they sent the ball into the right corner had a player there to pick it up. Watch this. They're together. Boom. That's one meeting two to me all day. All right. Regardless, here we go. It's going to be turned back around. Now, here is Harrison on the attack. Doesn't connect. Back shot from Rosser. Picked up by Mike. Mike's right there with Kareem all over him. Now, he pushes that ball forward. And Kareem takes it forward on the near side. Mike's able to get a piece of that ball. Gives it back over to Remy. Remy shoots it off to the right. Remy trying to get there. Damar trying to get the ball out of there. Patrick jumps on it. Remy, now Damar. Again, gets out of there with the ball. Takes off running right here. As he looks around, here he goes on the near side. Takes it forward here. Doesn't connect the way he wants. Pat's going to back him up. Sending the ball down the wall. Looking for some help. Remy gets there. Takes the man. Gets hooked by the chain link, it looks like. And Patrick is fired up again. I love it. Love to see the intensity there from the work to ride boom cult number three. He obviously assumes the call's going in his favor. There's a little shrug of the shoulder from Mike Azaro. They're going. Which would confirm the work to ride penalty. You can see Remy just getting himself turned around in there. Pat following up his teammate. And that will put them back on the penalty line. And we'll They're see. They're going, yeah. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Mike right here. So it was going to be a penalty number three. Undefended 25-yard shot on a, on a right-of-way violation against Remy. Now it turns into a penalty number two with that unsportsmanlike conduct. Oh, so Patrick back on the line again. So now we've got three players with yellow cards here today. Two of them uh, are against Work to Ride, and now we just got this one here against Casey Crush's Mike Azaro. 
unsportsmanlike conduct. Here comes Uritz, and Pat makes it count. And they're slowly chipping away at that lead right here. Now we've got a 14-8 score on the board. Oh, oh, Rosser tries to keep it going there. And nice. Going to be picked up again right here by Rosser. Can he keep it going? Mike doesn't connect. Rosser still with that ball on the near side. Look at this. Oh, man, I thought he had it there, too. Pizarro takes it forward once again. Mike works that ball off the ball, off the wall. A back shot here, setting up Yurts. Yurts is going to get there. Yurts in the red zone. Doesn't connect. The horse kicks it forward. And here comes Damar with a back shot to the goal. Oh, he overhit that one. And now it'll be oh, taken. The flagger signaled for a goal. I'm not sure if that was a missed signal or if, if Damar's horse might have kicked that ball in. It might have. Without him noticing. The players kept playing. The flagger was flagging for a goal. So the umpire... Okay. Wisely stopping the play. Take a look here. Does this ball cross? Yeah. Yeah, right that's a goal. Flagger knew it. I might have been Remy's horse either I way. I think it was Remy's horse. So who was that? Let's give it to Patrick there because he was the next guy to him. So. All right. So now we blew that. Just like we were talking about there. This team, now they're getting back into this game. We got a five goal ball game here. Thankless job, those flaggers, man. What a the clutch call right there. Seriously. Just because they kept playing, he stuck with his gut there. Hey, guys, we got a goal. Well done. Good call there. Well, That's a fantastic vantage point for an arena flagger, I must say. I want to give a, a, a special shout-out there to Mishi Gracida. She's watching the game uh, at La Eradura along with Memo and Megan. And, you know, Memo and Mike Izzaro won the U.S. Open and lots of polo together. They played together for many, many years. The uh, memo still holds the, the record for the most wins outdoor U.S. Open uh, with, I think he's won it like, I don't know, 74 times or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, great to know that they're, they're tuned in watching. Thanks so much for reaching out there, Mishi. It was just her birthday here on the 9th. So happy birthday to her. And uh, here we go. Getting ready to get the game back underway with a... Well, we've got a timeout here for Patrick on equipment timeout. Or a, yeah, looks like. <laughs> yeah, tack time. He's got a couple guys working on something over there. Carlitos just uh, corrected me. Carlitos is his nephew. Garcia corrected me. He said he won it 16 times, not 74. <laughs> not 76. They were, yeah. they were close. 16, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Patrick getting... Looks like a new stirrup, I believe. Maybe the stirrup leather. Something happened there. Well, little interesting connection, personal connection for me in this this game. The first year, I, I'm just trying to think back. It must have been 2006, I believe. I Toronto Polo Club Interscholastic team with my cousin Rob and our teammate Fernie Massillon. We lost in the finals. To El Dorado Polo Club, and that year it was Miguel Torres Jr., Miguelito, who had just been monstered to four goals outside. Yeah. And then Carlitos and Nikolai Galindo, who were, were both quite good players, they beat us in that year. But that year there was a team by the name of Cowtown, and a very young Kareem Rosser had broke onto the scene. And we were actually very happy that the way the tournament bracket shaped out we didn't have to play Cowtown yeah. at all but we ultimately lost to El Dorado in the finals I believe El Dorado beat Cowtown featuring Kareem Rosser that, that the, year that was the interscholastic interscholastic that, high school polo yeah I there was 15 I believe Kareem was like 12 or 13 at the time he was young all right <clears throat> excuse me here we go near side back shot Harrison it's a minute that ball waits for it to catch up to him now well done Harrison good read Takes off with it right here. Gets away from Rosser, from Kareem, and he shuts it down on the boards. He's going to walk the ball.
All right, so welcome back, everyone. We just wanted to give you a quick update here. We had a goal scored on that last play, and then we had two players uh, go down, and um, one of them is is, is Harrison Azaro. Uh, the medics are in there looking after uh, Harrison right now. Hopefully he's okay. We'll update you more as we get more information. But, yeah, we did have two players go down on that last play, which is obviously why we cut away. And um, the medics are in the, in the arena right now, um, looking after Harrison and hopefully he'll be okay. Uh, in the meantime, we've got a, we did get a goal on that, but I tell you what, we're going to cut back to a quick break here until we get some more information. And once we do, we'll come back and update you, but stay tuned uh, for the rest of the first semifinal of the 2023 edition of the U S open arena polo championship.
Fort Mock uh, was really built and designed to be a place where polo players can come and collaborate and join together and share in the sport of polo. Whether you're a horse trainer, a polo professional, want to play competitive polo, or just play practices, we offer it all to you. The Orthwine started this deal 12 years ago. This place is like no other in South Florida. When you get out to Port Mock, you're just like, wow, this is beautiful. You have the most important ingredient, which is the fields. The fields allow you to play a certain way. It opens up the game, and they certainly have incredible fields. So at Port Mayaka, you have sets going out in the morning, people getting their horses ready for polo, practices four days a week. We stick and ball, we ride together. There's a lot of camaraderie here. You'll see people in the afternoons coming up to the pavilion, having lunch. Down by the club barns, they'll hang out there and have asados. We've got two big charity matches we do, one's for the uh, Everglades Foundation, which is a great cause, and the other one's for Molly's House. We get big crowds, big draws, and it's always a lot of fun. The Port Maca is a full-service club, and that means we have so much shared infrastructure where you know, not only is it fun to go out there and be on the track with people and ride and train horses, it just makes the sport more collaborative. All right, welcome back, everyone. So Harrison is good, obviously. He's mounted back up. He got some dirt on the... Uh, on the jersey there but yeah he was we were a little worried there for a moment but uh, he's doing good he's obviously mounted back up ready to go Matt is cleared him to continue to play and we've got a 15-9 score on the board right now i did hear there was a goal on that last play so i wonder if that hasn't been updated yet because it was we'll find out here in just a moment actually okay so we're going to start this one off with a Shot right here. Look at this. Patrick one time hammers that ball down and puts it over the arena wall and out of play. So we did get a goal by Remy on that last play there. So that's going to make this, I think it means that, that it's going to be a 16 9 score on the board here. Unless, do I have that wrong? We'll see here. Yeah, 15 9 for now. We'll get the official word. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to get. Okay, so change of possession here. Here we go. Here's the shot. Back down, coming in. Yurts one time hits that ball. Back down the right hand side. Mueller comes in for the defense. He connects, sends it to the center. Harrison tries to keep it going. We get another. That's it. That's going to end the chucker. Okay. So we're going to go to another quick break and we'll come back to play the final chucker of regulation here in our first semifinal of the 2023 edition of the U.S. Polo. ASSN presents the U.S. Open Arena Polo Championship only on the USP Polo Network. That I wanted to play polo and I started galloping. You're galloping full speed down a field trying to hit a ball. You can't think of anything else but just running down that field and seeing the green go past you and the sky and the wind against your face. It really gets your heart rate up and you're like wow this is incredible. You're flying. It, fe it feels like you're flying. It's amazing. It feels like there's this moment of peace under you and it just feels like everything's right and that everything is going to go well. It's amazing what these animals can do. There's nothing that compares. There's nothing like it. As I stuck with it, got a little bit better, started to get a feel for it, I really fell in love with it. A lot of people will call it polo fever. I hope to see you guys out there. To come here and have it be a national tournament and people coming from all over the country is super special. I feel like in the arena especially, we're kind of like gladiators out there. The Women's Arena Open is my favorite tournament. It's great because it's like the epitome of women's arena polo. I think arena polo kind of gets forgotten. These girls out here, they're tough and um, playing against them is fun, but it's intense for sure. I can't describe it in any other way than intense. All right, welcome back, everyone. Here we go, getting ready for our final chucker of the first game here in the uh, Arena U.S. Open 2023 edition at the beautiful California Polo Club. Right close to uh, Hollywood, just to say 10 minutes from Hollywood there in, in L.A. Uh, we're going to start the chucker off with a penalty number three here going in favor of work to ride. So let's check out that last replay. Okay, so wait, we don't have that. All right, so we're going to wait and find out here. But, yeah, that's the information that I'm getting right now is that we're going to start off with a penalty number three. Well, doesn't look like a, 
the moment here. No, I guess not. They, t- <laughs> they made a liar over there, so never mind. The score is correct, though. 15 9 is the score. Just got word back there. Now, Mike comes in to challenge. Wow, he got it away. Look at Mike. Man on a mission right here. Look at this. Reaches back, tries to keep it away from Rosser. Mike drags it forward, and the back shot here over hits that tail shot. Picked up now. Good read by Juris. He gets hooked by Mueller, and now it's going to be picked up by Rosser. Kareem hits the next shot back on down, looking to find. Well done, Harrison. What a read there. And Mike again comes up with the ball. Azaro. And he fight off those defenders. He'll leave it now for Remy. Mueller comes in. Mueller takes it forward right there. Mueller's shot is going, going. It's off to the right. Mike comes in and drills it and picks up another point, his eighth goal of the game. Wow. What a goal, Mike. Yeah, just relentless effort from Azaro. Mike Azaro, that is just all game long here, Toby. And as we've mentioned, he just seems to be everywhere, offensively and defensively. Definitely super well mounted here in this game. All right. Now, here comes Juritz. I'm going to go ahead and send this one off to the right-hand side of the arena. And it stays in this time. Azaro lets that one get away from him. And it's going to be... Uh, Picked up now by Kareem Rosser. You can throw a blanket over all three work to ride players right there. Now Rosser trying to fight off those defenders. His shot is just off to the right, left of the goal. And now here comes Mike with a next shot to get it out of the danger zone. Looking for Remy. Remy fires it up there for Harrison, who's got who's out in front by himself, break away, going to the goal. But it looks like that one might have got away from him. The whistle stops the clock. Looks like a possession here for work to ride. Boom Colt getting a little luck going their way here. They need to start scoring goals quickly here with just four, sorry, five minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the final chucker. All right, here we go. Mike, he's going to jump, or excuse me, Harrison's going to jump on this ball right here. He's going to turn it back, take it with him. Now he comes out of that turn, leaves it though, and it's Damar to jump on it. He's hooked by Mike, gets away from Mike. Damar. Trying to keep it moving forward right here. Here's Mueller with a back shot. Now, Damar trying to get to it again. Picked up by Harrison. And, oh, Kareem. You might have got one there. Well done. Juritz jumping on that loose ball. Got the right of way. Picked up. He's got Mike there on his hip. Now, Patrick looking for a way to get to that goal. He's going to go ahead and shoot. It's just off to the right right here. Can he make it hit count? It's there. And Mueller got it out of the danger zone. Oh, ho, ho, ho. What do we have here? Let's see. Looked like... They're going against KC Crush, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like Harrison had to come across the line to meet that ball there. So penalty... Well, we'll wait and see. Three or two. Take a look. You can see where Harrison is at the left of your screen right here, and he has to come across the line. Yep. Kareem doing a good job. Picking up that line, jumping out. Yeah, going to go with, a, I think it looks like a two. We'll see if we get that confirmed right now. So this is Stinger that Patrick Juritz is riding. Remember, he had to schedule to start on the sec, in the second chucker. He jumped on it late in the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He let that one get away from him. I tell you what, I really, I think that's been the, the biggest hole in, in Wart to Rise game today is those missed penalty shots. <clears throat> now, excuse me, here comes Kareem. With the ball, working it down the boards right here as Remy stays with him. Harrison comes in to challenge now. He gets away from everybody, takes a shot towards the goal. Off the wall, Mike bangs it back out of there, and now it's going to be picked up here by Harrison with Kareem on his hip. Harrison continues the drive. They are pumping right now, working it down. Now, Harrison, no fear. Look at this. What a play. Azaro, he got it. I think he got it, didn't he? Yeah, that was a goal. Yeah, that was a goal, and Kareem taking it out very quickly. Oh, so they do have a stoppage here. I was going to say, ball went in, Kareem took it. Maybe he thought it went wide there because you pick up that ball really quickly out of the goal, tap it a couple of times. If you mishandle it, the defensive yeah. team is is able. That's a, that's that's a, a goal, goal for yep, sure. 100%. Well done, Harrison. So we're... Not a hundred percent sure what the wh the whistle may have just been to confirm that it was a goal. 
But as we were saying, this work to ride boom call team needs to start scoring. They have to probably take chances at two pointers. That's all. The, that's the only way they're going to get back into this game for sure. That means shooting from outside the twenty-five yard line, which doesn't sound like it's difficult, but no. Yeah, and that was it a tough, tough play defensively. There, you saw Rosser was on the outside of Azaro to start, but you can't ride the player into the wall. So he decided he was going to check down, try to cut back behind. But Harrison just going at a ton of speed. He made a great play there. Harrison is just fearless. So that wall coming up, Kareem saw it. He checked up. Harrison did not. He's just going for it. Yeah, that's one of those plays you you almost have to just, you know, stick to your man. You can't ride him into the wall, but just hold true. And, stay you, with him, and yeah. you hope that, that once that ball comes off the end wall, it ends up on your near side. And here comes... Patrick, your near side back shot going for it right there, looking for the two pointer. It's off the wall though, and it's going to be a back shot here again from Mueller over to the far far wall, picked up by good play here by Yurich. Takes it to the inside of Mike. Well done, Patrick. He's trying for those two pointers, but it's going to be off, well off to the left, and Mueller will come up with the ball once again. Okay. Picked up right here. Look at that. There's another shot for two. Well done. Mueller got a cane on that ball. Good hand-eye coordination right there. Yeah, good call, Cody. <laughs> now, picked up again here by Mueller. Remy working it on the near side right here. Ball comes over to the wall, and here comes Kareem with a little belly shot. Next shot, I should say. Now, he does, does get the back shot off right there, but we get a whistle. Horse change timeout, so we're down to about half a chucker here. Yeah, we'll wait for the official word. They might have caught Kareem on the reach here. Let's see. Take a look. Remy will end up taking this one forward. Then he gets the ball on his near side, and Kareem goes for the near side as well. One of those plays you might not get away with outdoors, but as soon as he goes, flips that ball under the horse's neck, Goes to the near side because that wall's there. You can't make a play like that because yeah. he's got nowhere to go. Yeah, that might hit, that might be the call here. I'm not sure if. Yeah, we're having some. We, yeah, we're having some technical issues there. With the calls coming through, but either way, the players will change horses here with about three minutes left. Again, certainly not well impossible, but boom call work to ride. They need some two pointers and a fast. Very difficult for sure. Well, Ed, watching this one, he says he's in India promoting international arena polo right now. Wow. Well, we have a break. We can take a look at some of our most recent champions. Beverly Equestrian defeated Hotels at Sea last year. Very strong Beverly Equestrian team that consisted of Will Ballhouse, Lucio Ocampo, and Toledo Ocampo. And defeating hotels at seas. You can see Dallas Polo Club defeated Boom Cult in 2021. And then a couple COVID years before that, Aliano Realty, New York City Polo Club coming off of back-to-back -back victories in 2016 and 17. So some good stuff right there. And your friend Tommy Biddle played for one of those mm -hmm. NYC Polo Club teams, Jared Sheldon. Won both years for NYC Polo with Samuel Ramirez. The first year they played with Matias Magrini and then Tommy Biddle. And that's a good team, Biddle. Yeah, there was a, I think it was it was it was Chris Campson, uh, Felipe Viana, and uh, who was their their third player? That won three years in a row with the same three players three years in a row. Sam Ramirez, maybe? I think it was. It might have been. It could be. But, yeah, I remember they won it up there in New York uh, three years in a row with the same three players. Only the second time it's ever been done in the history of the of, of the Arena U.S. Open, which was fun. You know, uh, that's back in the days when, we'd, when we would go, we'd have to go to the location for the live stream. So we went up there to uh, to Long Island. But right now, coming back to this game, here comes Mike. And Azaro sends it on through, picking up that penalty number two. Mike, a goal-scoring machine here today. Ah, it was Rob Cipriano. Thank you very much, Justin. I appreciate that. Rob, yeah, it was Rob Cipriano that was yeah, the third member of that team. Now, 
Here comes a good play right here by Patrick Yurich. Yurich trying to fight off Mueller. Mueller just holds the mallet and now leaves it there for Rosser. Kareem on that ball. Taps it back to the inside of Mike. Back to the right of Mike. Looking for a two-pointer right here. He's going to leave it for Patrick. Patrick has to keep it just to this side of that 25-yard line. They know they've got to shoot for two if they want to have a chance right here. He's going to hit his back shot. Mike uses his chest to knock it down. Then takes off running. Azaro goes with the next shot. Picked up now by Harrison to follow up and play. But we get another whistle right here. Going right of way against work to ride. Boom cult is the information I'm getting in right now, Cody. Let's see what we can see. Well, body language seems to agree with that as well here. It looks like this work to ride boom cult team wasn't too happy with the call. And I think it's they're going to get Patrick there, perhaps shading in front of Mike Azaro. Yep, it's going to, yep, it's going to be against uh, right away going against Patrick on Azaro. Penalty number three. 25 yard undefended shot on goal. Here comes Mike. All right. Balls wide. Patrick hits it one time back down there looking for Kareem. Who tries to get this one going? Here's a back shot there. 18-10. Now the score. And here is Remy Mueller to put one more on the board if he can get it done. We've had 28 goals scored so far and less than four chuckers. That's pretty impressive in any kind of polo you're watching. Right here, Mueller looking to make it 29 total. And he'll get it done right there. Well done, Remy. If I'm not mistaken, that's his second goal of the game. And here comes a whistle. Harrison, he's, <laughs> he's like, wow, man. Just drops his head, gives it a bit of a shake. Looks like this will go in favor of work to ride. Boom called there. Harrison. Procedural violation. Patrick going to look for two right here. One thing about this work to ride boom cult team, they are not going to quit until that final horn sounds. Here comes Juritz. Goes for it. He got underneath that ball. Not a, perfect. Kept it inside. And here comes Remy on the near side to take it away. Remy playing well today. Mueller looking for a two-pointer of his own. His shot is off to the right. And now Mueller coming in, trying to back up his own play. Up on the handlebars there. Patrick comes. And now it's going to be Kareem. Rosser sending it forward, looking for Juritz. Rosser backs up his own shot. Sends it forward again. Rosser right there. And Patrick goes for two. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tough break there for Patrick. Now, Azaro drags it forward on his near side. It's looking more and more like Casey Crush is going to be going to the finals here of the Arena U.S. Open. Azaro working both sides of the horse, reaching back behind. Gets a little help there from the horse. Takes his next shot at the goal. Gets off the wall. Picked up again right here by Kareem. And now taken by... Yeah, Patrick, and that one got away from him, it looks like. So we're going to have another possession play. That's the other thing I have to say that, that I think Work to Ride had real trouble with today was keeping that ball in the arena. You know, they gave up a lot of possession plays today, Cody. Absolutely. Some missed penalties, some missed hits, resulting in a lot of changes of possession. Oh, Mike and was... And on top of that, just going up against a very strong team here. Yeah. And Casey Crush. All right. So, another possession, uh, change of possession here. Patrick wasting no time, brings it into play. Yurtz gets a little closer and then hits it off to the right where he's going to find. Oh, tough break there. Kareem. Looking for a two-pointer right here. He shoots at the goal. Another, uh, well, stays in play. Not this time, though. He puts it over the back line. So another change of possession here, which is going to stop the clock with 34 seconds left to go. Just a matter of time now, Toby, nice. 34 it's, seconds. It's academic at this point, isn't it? Yep. And as you mentioned, Casey Crush will be the first team to advance to the finals. 
was work to ride will slip into the arena handicap consolation side brand new tournament in fact if you want to look at it like that yeah that's true it is being played as a separate tournament that's right now here comes Rosser, and he'll pick up one more point, and it looks like that's going to be just about it. Well, I guess procedurally, do they have to make a play on the ball? Now they're going to go ahead and concede victory here. So final score looks like it's going to be 19-11. Casey Crush going to the finals of the 2023 U.S. Open Arena Polo Championship. What a game. Fantastic game. Great pace all day long here. And Casey Crush, they just had a bit of an advantage here. The horses looked really good. Mike Azaro, former 10-goal player, looked the part today. He was on fire, and he just had great contributions from his son Harrison and Remy Mueller as well. So congratulations to them. Work to ride. Boom Cult played a great tournament just to get to this point. So kudos really to them, again, playing on rented strange horses they yep. did extremely well and great to see the brothers playing getting an opportunity patrick Uritz, seven goal player coming in on this team all right all right so that's gonna be it all right so we're gonna go ahead and uh we're gonna wrap it up here and we'll be coming back pretty quickly as soon as they get the arena resurfaced whoa for the uh next game so for cody often i'm toby wayman thanks so much for tuning in the USPA Polo Network, and we will see you at the next live stream coming up here in just a few minutes.